Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program a track freestyle in Reaper. Now, the idea of programming a track freestyle is using a completely free tempo. Although we can still quantize around it later, but for creative purposes, sometimes you have an idea, whether it's a melody or a drum part, and you don't want to think about tempo. You just want to put it down. Don't think about swing or triplet feel. Just record it and build around it, keeping the tempo free flowing, even if it speeds up or slows down. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that, as I personally find it a bit more inspiring not to have to lock to the click every time. Now this will work with any instrument. It could be a piano, a guitar, but in this video, I'm going to use programmed drums. I'm going to put down a kick and snare part and build a track around it without quantizing the original performance. So I've already set up on this track a Satawa drum machine with a custom kick, snare, and hi hats. And I'm going to trigger it with my USB MIDI keyboard, completely freestyle without any click, without adjusting our tempo. We're keeping it at 120 beats per minute. So let's record a part. Now we could do it a few different ways. We could play it many times and just grab the best loop, but I'm just gonna play it until I'm happy with the performance. So let's record a part. Now, if you notice, I played the downbeat of the next bar right over here, which will make it easier for finding our tempo. Let's hear it back. I'm really happy with the performance, although it's not perfectly in time. But we're going to build a tempo map around it, as you'll see. So, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to drag it to a bar. I'll use bar three. Let's trim it out a bit and make sure it starts after that bar, right about there. Then we'll trim the left side, turn snapping in the grid to be exactly bar three. Let's double click it to open up the MIDI editor. Here's our part. Let's select all the notes and cut them, and let's paste them on bar three. Or we could just move them manually, like this. So now it starts exactly on bar three. Now we can close the MIDI editor, and let's put a tempo marker on bar three. Put our cursor right here, hit Shift C. That's gonna put a tempo marker right there. Don't worry about changing it at this point, we just need to place it right here. Then we'll check how many bars this plays for. It's exactly two bars. So it should stop at bar five. So we'll put our cursor on bar five and put another tempo marker right here. Hit OK. And next, we need to change this item so it doesn't respond to tempo. Right click, item properties, change the item time base to be time and the properties to ignore the project tempo. This way it doesn't chase our tempo changes. The tempo markers follow the performance. So now we'll grab the second tempo marker, control on the PC, command on the Mac, and drag it over so it lands on this last hit, which is why we recorded the next downbeat. Let's zoom in, make it perfect, move it right there, zoom out. Now this is the tempo I played, about 69 beats per minute. Now 
Now we could tell it's not perfect. So let's add more tempo markers to match the performance more closely. We'll start with the top of bar four, shift C. Now for this tempo marker, we need to hold down two modifiers. This way, if we move this one, it doesn't affect the previous or the next one. So on PC, it's Control Alt, and on Mac, it's Command Option. Let's zoom in and move this right in this hit. Let's hear that. Let's add a few more on the snares, which will be beat two, beat four on both bars. And we could do this on every hit with just a few to make it close. Zoom in, move this one right here, zoom into this one, move it about here, zoom into this one, do the same thing. And then finally, this one. Let's loop from bar three to bar five. That's pretty close. And we could see by how different they are that I didn't play it perfectly. So let's trim this side to here. And to see how tight this is, let's overdub a hi-hat part. Now we can turn on the metronome. So now let's quantize the hi-hat. And we'll see how tight our tempo map is. Double click. And here's the hi hat we performed. Let's right click the closed hat, hold on shift, and do the open hat. So they're both selected. And let's quantize just the hi hats. Choose selected notes, 16th notes, and quantize it. And let's see how tight it is with the kick and snare we played freestyle. Again, it's not perfect, but it's pretty tight. So now we could add other instruments to this and quantize them, and they'll stay in time with our freestyle performance. Let's add a bass track using Zebralette as the bass sound. We already have quantized turned on on the input as we can see right here. So it's going to quantize on the way in and should stay in time with our freestyled performance because of the tempo map we used. Now it's add a piano part. I'll use piano one, and I'll just put down some chords. Now let's put down a synth. I save this synth from Vital. There's a sequence part that plays different rhythms just by holding down a key. Let's record that part. Notice how it stays in time with our freestyled performance. And then finally, 
I have a plucked sound from Serum. We can put down a 16th note percussive part. Notice how this stays in time with our freestyled performance. Again, it's quantizing on the way in to 16th notes. Let's mute the synth. Sounded pretty good, and our original drum track doesn't sound as sloppy as it did before, as everything is quantized to that original performance, even though it's still freestyle. We never quantized the original timing. We mapped around it, which means if we don't want to work with just this loop, we want to create a whole project, we need to duplicate this tempo map throughout the whole song, and we could do that by going to the view menu, choose tempo envelope. Here are the tempo changes we made. Just right click, drag to marquee, select these points like that, then copy them and paste them every two bars. At bar five, bar seven, bar nine, and throughout the project to keep our tempo map intact. That should be enough. Let's hide the master track and the tempo. Let's marquee select these items, control on the PC, command on the Mac to duplicate them every two bars. That should be enough. Now we could arrange our song. Let's delete the plucked synth and the bass. So we'll just start with the piano, bring in the bass, then the synth, then the plucked percussive synth. And now we create an arrangement for our song with the same tempo map every two bars. Let's delete our loop and let's hear our arrangement. So we've built a track and an arrangement all around the original freestyled performance. That was never quantized to a click, but we built a tempo map around it. I personally find this a bit more creative. If I have an idea in my head, I don't want to think about tempo or swing or triplet. I just want to play it and build around that loose or freestyle performance. So that's pretty much it. That's how to program a track, Freestyle in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.